Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this QSO Today uh, Virtual Ham Expo um, presentation. In this presentation I will be showing you some of the uses in, uh, of digital technology uh, in emergency communications. Um, so first of all something about myself. Uh, my name is Suat Chovo, uh, Echo 79 Sierra Uniform Alpha. Uh, I am uh, a co coordinator for informational technology or IT in the emergency communications network of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is a part of uh, Amateur Radio Association of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, here you can see uh, my uh, social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. Also, you can uh, message me uh, through this link. Um, if you have any questions after this webinar is over. Um, something about myself, I'm 18 years old. Uh, I first engaged in uh, amateur radio activities in 2018. Um, I'm holding a uh, SEPT uh, November uh, license. Uh, I represented uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina in many contests, uh, ham contests, uh, seminars and camps. The most recent one was the Youngsters on the Air uh, summer camp in uh, Karlovac, Croatia. Um, also, I am obviously part of the Emergency Communications Network, uh, the national network which provides emergency communication services to those in need. Uh, obviously, you can uh, find more information uh, about me on my social media. So. Uh, we will continue with the next part. So, uh, what is uh, emergency communications or what are emergency communications or MCOM? Uh, so, uh, in times of crisis and natural disasters, uh, amateur radio is often used as a means uh, of emergency communications when um, other means of communication such as uh, landline and cell, cell phones uh, and other uh, conventional means of communications fail. So for example, uh, there's a flood in your area or an earthquake. Um, unfortunately, in some parts of the world, even wars and, uh, and other things. So in those cases, you usually don't have internet connection. You don't have a cell phone coverage. You don't have a landline and so on. So the only thing left to communicate with uh, your loved ones or anyone at all is basically emergency rad um, amateur radio emergency communications. So this could be done uh, via uh, something as simple as VHF or UHF um, handheld transceivers. It could be also through mobile and stationary uh, transceivers. Also, we can use uh, HF or high frequency um, communications, which can go a little bit farther, um, probably reaching like uh, very distant countries. Uh, we also have a digital communication, which is not so uh, common uh, in amateur radio, but we will be covering that today. So it is a very important, important part of uh, amateur radio and sometimes even uh, operators are the only ones that can help uh, rescue some people and um, call for rescue or call for help uh, to some people that uh, basically can't communicate with the outside world at all. So uh, today um, we will be uh, focusing on digital communications uh, or uh, digital communications in amateur radio for emergency purposes. Uh, this could be done in many different ways. Uh, first of all, we have DMR. Uh, probably most of you are uh, already familiar with DMR or um, digital um, radio. Uh, so uh, next is uh, Hamnet. Uh, this uh, we will be focusing on Hamnet the most today. Also, we have Voice over IP. Uh, we won't be covering that much uh, today because 
the every one of us have like um, WhatsApp and uh, similar services. So that's one example of voice over IP. We also have uh, SVX links. Um, that's something uh, probably most of you haven't heard, um, but we will be covering that as well. And also we have emails and chat over radio uh, via protocols uh, such as WinLink and Vara. So, uh, Hamnet, uh, first of all, Hamnet uh, stands for uh, High Speed Amateur Radio Multimedia Network. Uh, it's the implementation of 802.11n uh, standard, which is basically your everyday Wi-Fi network at home, uh, but at certain amateur radio frequencies of Wi-Fi networks, and with uh, more, way more power than your regular uh, home routers, uh, so it can uh, reach uh, very uh, far away distances. Um, licensed amateur radio operators can use the 9 centimeters band, so the 802.11n uh, standard frequencies or Wi-Fi frequencies, uh, with significantly higher power output than regular Wi-Fi users. Uh, while uh, unlicensed Wi-Fi uh, can legally output maximum of 100 uh, milliwatts of power, uh, licensed operators, um, as we can see, uh, around half of the band reserved for Wi-Fi, also has a, a nine centimeter amateur band. So uh, on this band, uh, we can operate uh, with powers of up to uh, even a few watts, uh, provided that uh, we always identify, identify with our call signs that we are licensed with. So that means either through SSID or the network's name or basically anything that um, we can be ident identified um, and with our right to operate these frequencies with higher power. There are two types of uh, Hamnet networks. Those are uh, centralized and mesh networks. Uh, centralized networks are usually uh, implemented in Europe. That means that there is a um, central point in the network um, which uh, to which other um, uh, nodes should I say uh, can connect to um, so for example if we have a, a central uh, point in New York uh, all um, other stations uh, stations around it can connect to it uh, while mesh networks are uh, usually present in um, the United States or the Americas um, that means that uh, there's no central point. So this is a de decentralized network, uh, which means that uh, one station can connect to the other and that will connect to, I don't know, third station. Uh, and that will, uh, so uh, the third station, for example, can receive information from the first channel of, or for the, from the first station uh, through the second station or the second node. Um, both of these sites are used anywhere in the world, but uh, the centralized um, network is used uh, more in Europe, while mesh networks are more common in the Americas. Uh, for the European networks, um, as we can see on the next slide, uh, we can visit uh, hamnetdb.net website uh, and we have uh, the map of all um, European uh, Hamnet stations. Uh, you can't really see uh, well on this um, screenshot, but uh, we can see that in Germany and Austria, uh, there's a mix of these two networks, so the centralized and mesh. We can see that most of the nodes in Germany and Austria are uh, connected through mesh. Um, so these um, nodes, our Hamnet nodes and stations are really well documented uh, in Europe and we can find them uh, easily on uh, this website. Also, as we can see, um, there's uh, an IP address or IP block 
that is reserved exclusively for hamnet or the uh, ra amateur radio um, use. So this is 44.0.0.0 uh, uh, through 8. And uh, the first um, block is reserved only for amateur radio and the second block denotes uh, the country in which the uh, station is operating. So instead of uh, uh, only using call signs to identify these stations, we also use their IP addresses and their DNS resolved names. So for example, if I create a Hamnet station that is Echo 79 Sierra Uniform Alpha, uh, not only will I be identifying with my call sign through the network name and the DNS name, or we can just uh, say that it's a URL, a URL. So we will be using our call signs as URLs, basically. Um, but also we get our own IP address, static IP address, which we can use to connect to the other stations in Hamnet. So uh, basically this Hamnet uh, network, the very um, big advantage of Hamnet is that it is completely or it can be uh, completely uh, separated from the regular internet connection. And in case there is loss of power and uh, loss of, more importantly, internet connection, uh, we can use Hamnet uh, to completely uh, separate ourselves from the internet we all uh, know. And uh, we can uh, use it for many uh, different services, for example, voice over IP, as I previously mentioned. We can also uh, host websites, for example, with important information. Uh, and these networks, uh, instead of uh, your uh, ordinary Wi-Fi network at home, which can maybe have a reach of around 100 meters, this can, uh, this these uh, Hamnet networks can have range of up to uh, tens uh, of kilometers so it can have a pretty big reach um, so um, as we can see uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina on this previous map uh, is not uh, really um, uh, it does not host many or any at all uh, Hamlet stations but there are some proposed projects for example in our um, emergency communications network of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we proposed, uh, as you can see on this slide, um, a station which connects three like big cities, not big, but um, economically important cities. Uh, so that would be Sarajevo, Zenica and Prakan, uh, which is my uh, main uh, QTH. So, um, <coughs> As we can see uh, in the Zenica, uh, in Zenica, um, it is uh, we have a Hamnet station on Mount Lisac. In Kakan, it would be uh, on the hills of Turbici and Vrana, which have good reach uh, both to Zenica and to Sarajevo, which is really open. And uh, in Sarajevo, we have uh, Mount Hum, uh, which holds the Hum Tower. Uh, the um, the main telecommunications tower in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So uh, as we can see on the map on the left side, uh, there is a lot of terrain. There is There are mountains, there are hills, and so on. Uh, but uh, the cities, the whole cities are located in the passes or in the valleys between the mountains and hills. So the signal propagation is um, uh, very, um, low in quality uh, so uh, we use these mountains and hills uh, which can reach uh, all three cities uh, and those um, um, those nodes or those towers can pick up signals from each of the others and transmit it down to the city and uh, also as we can see uh, from Kakan or, or between Kakan and Sarajevo there are uh, um, a few other uh, towns or cities, uh, for example, Visoko, Breza, and so on, uh, which are uh, pretty much open. Uh, that's a, a one big valley uh, with 
basically not uh, no no significant terrain uh, so that signal can also be picked up from those cities so it won't be uh, uh, it won't be a situation when where only uh, three cities are covered, but also many more, at least in the this central part of Bosnia. Um, <clears throat> this network will probably be um, will probably be connected to uh, the main uh, Hamnet server, which is located at the Faculty uh, of Electrical Engineering uh, at the University of Sarajevo. Um, which hosts the uh, main server um, and uh, it is operated by ETF. It can be accessed through VPN or directly and it uh, already hosts a web server uh, and asterisk, uh, asterisk uh, voice over IP, SIP, which means we can also through Hamnet we can uh, use the landline uh, to communicate. Uh, and also there's a voice over IP app called Mambo, which is already installed uh, on this server. Uh, anyone in Bosnia and Herzegovina can use this server already, uh, though it is not connected through actual physical network, you can only access it right now through VPN. Uh, however, uh, if this project ever comes to reality, it will be connected to the uh, international Hamnet networks as well. Uh, next part I want to talk about uh, are SVX links. So SVX links um, are um, networks um, uh, with uh, multiple connected stations, uh, in this case uh, in multiple cities uh, around Bosnia and Croatia and Serbia. So um, these stations are uh, connected through internet uh, with uh, each other and uh, they are uh, listening and transmitting on VHF and UHF frequencies. So, for example, if I uh, call someone from Sarajevo uh, and in th that uh, SVX link, for example, they are Sarajevo and Zagreb. And if I call um, from Sarajevo on the SVX link frequency, VHF or UHF, uh, the Sarajevo station will be listening what I will be transmitting on that frequency and through internet will be sending it to uh, all stations in the uh, network including this Zagreb station and the Zagreb station will be transmitting what I am talking in Sarajevo over the v VHF frequency in Sarajevo so <clears throat> regularly in direct connection you, will, you can't possibly hear Sarajevo and Zagreb because they are very far but with SGX link we kind of have this uh, secondary channel, uh, that's the internet, which transmits something that we are talking here and transmits it to the other place, to the uh, radio there. So, um, as we can see on this map, we have a network called uh, SGX Link DECA. Uh, and uh, all of these stations are connected to each other. So. Um, someone talking from Sarajevo can also be heard uh, in north, the northern Bosnia and southern Bosnia, also in Serbia and Croatia, and they can be uh, operating with minimal powers like one watt and still be heard all around even the world. Like there are uh, also users from America and Turkey that are operating on this network using Echolink. Um, that's basically uh, talking from your computer um, and uh, echo link transmits it to a station and it basically is uh, transferred from digital from the computer to um, to the radio so uh, if for example internet fails in emergency situations uh, this network would be down but with Hamnet uh, we could be uh, completely separated from the internet. We can use the local network of Amnet to connect all of these stations and in case of power loss or internet, it won't be affected at all. Uh, the only thing that would be affected in this, um, in this situation is the uh, echo link component which would fail. 
we also have Link, uh, Winlink. Um, so Winlink uh, is a network of amateur radio uh, and other stations that provide worldwide uh, radio email using radio pathways where the internet is not present. Uh, <coughs> as we can see, uh, for example, if there is no internet or um, net, uh, or even electricity, we can basically send real life like emails. Uh, even th even though we don't have internet, we can send emails uh, from one station to another. Then uh, another station which has internet will will send that email physical or like digitally or over the internet to the email address we put in, and they will receive the email without us ever connecting to the internet. So we have uh, had a uh, demonstration of this um, with Link and Vara. Vara is a component that transmit actually transmits the emails over radio using sound card. As we can see on this slide, uh, we had a regional exercise uh, called uh, IARU protocol in crisis situations. We communicated with Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia. Uh, there's also um, Germany here, Austria, and Montenegro, which are not shown in this picture. Um, so uh, these are photos from uh, Kakan, uh, my main um, QTH. Uh, as we can see, there's no internet connection. We didn't even use a 4G network or mobile, mobile data. And we use these radios and this laptop uh, to send emails. Um, from Kakan that went to, through Zenitsa, as we can see on this slide, Echo 79 Romeo Z Zulu Echo, and uh, it was sent further to Slovenia. Uh, we didn't have internet connection, Zenitsa did, the Romeo Zulu Echo station, and they sent it, basically sent it for us. So these are those photos. The bottom left photo is from uh, testing before this exercise and the other photos are from different QTH uh, for uh, when we actually send those emails. This is a screenshot of the uh, VARA station <coughs> or uh, VARA and the VARA chat platform which is basically similar but we are not sending emails we are just chatting with other station th uh, stations through your radio without using internet. And this is the ER, um, IARU uh, emergency message. This is according to the IARU uh, emergency communications guide. Um, <clears throat> so um, this is the general uh, telegram, I should say, or message that should be sent in case of emergency. For example, if you need to requ uh, request ambulance or something, this will be sent to another station that is not in this crisis situation. And uh, last but not least, um, we have this uh, image on our last slide, which says, when Facebook and Instagram went down, ham radio did not. Amateur radio keeping people in contact since 1901. That is the main message of this uh, set, um, presentation. When everything else fails, ham radio stays there and helps people. Uh, thank you for listening questions and answer session will begin now. Uh, I will be uh, live now uh, to be answering your questions related to uh, digital communications in emergency situations. Thank you for listening. Okay, Swed. Uh, I am here. Are you there? <laughs> Can you hear us okay? I think you might be muted. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Evidently, I turned up my volume way too much. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Clifford, thank you for uh, noticing that we are here because I went to the uh, VFARES presentation and we were listed out of order. So uh, if you looked at, okay, what's next? We were there, went to the next few presentations starting in an hour and then we were below that so uh 
a few people I see have come in. So uh, first thing, uh, Suad, do you know if there's any activity in the U.S.? And uh, we're, well, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and answer that. <laughs> Uh, well, um, as far as uh, Hamnet goes, as I already mentioned, uh, there are uh, mesh networks. Uh, so basically one station connected to the other and that station to the third and so on. So there are a lot of those stations. Um, as far as um, emergency communications are concerned, uh, I'm not aware of that fact, um, but we, uh, me and Don actually had a conversa conversation earlier uh, he lives in uh, Florida, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so they have like pretty bad weather and hurricanes and stuff. So, um, so I know they that they have um, emergency communications in that, those situations. So I guess that's um, uh, depends on where you live. Um, yeah. As I was uh, speaking to Swad, uh, I said, well, you know, in Florida. Uh, Ham Radio always talks about emergency communications, but we take it very seriously here because of the hurricanes. And uh, Winlink is the standard around here anyway that is used by uh, the Red Cross and other emergency uh, communications people. Uh, do uh, the one thing you didn't touch on, or one of the communication standards you didn't touch on, Salad, was uh, Pactor. Do you use any of that? Um. Uh, as of now, we didn't use Pactor, um, but uh, it's pretty interesting. The thing is with Pactor is that they have like uh, really uh, the connection speed is really slow. Um, so it could, I mean, it could be actually used in Hamnet. It is used in Hamnet. Um, it, you could use it on the regular bands such as two meters and so on, um, but the uh, thing I covered in this was using the nine centimeters band, so 2.4 gigahertz and uh, five gigahertz. So right now we didn't use Pactor. Uh, we only use the uh, off-the-shelf products, um, and that's basically it. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Arden Mesh, which is very similar to the uh, the Hamnet, like we're talking now. Uh, so what, are you using off-the-shelf Wi-Fi routers to repurpose for uh, your hamnet? And uh, if you are, uh, is there any limitation? And what kind of antennas are you using for that, uh, for the nine centimeters? Actually, uh, we in Bosnia don't actually have the active hamnet radio. They are just proposed projects. Uh, okay. But um, you could also use uh, the regular home routers even though they have a pretty limited reach. And um, uh, the limitations are only if you don't have a ham radio license. If you have a license, you can identify yourself with your call sign um, or your network. And uh, there are uh, antennas, uh, I think there are dish antennas. Um, uh, they are set up uh, on, on the roofs and also on the towers, uh, if I remember correctly, in Germany and Austria. Uh, and they send it like, pretty much anywhere. So uh, there are limitations such as terrain, propagations, and so on. Uh, but that's the antennas that they use. And also they use like pretty uh, way bigger uh, powers than regular Wi-Fi's do. Yes. OK. Uh, John is telling us that uh, with packed word, depending upon the conditions, you can get up to 1,400 uh, bits per second. But uh, the, the modems are expensive. Whereas I know uh, Vera uh, that you talked about is a software interface uh, for a sound card, and that can be free with limitations, or you can buy a license for that for, gee, I think the last time I looked, it was $75 or so. Okay. Have you had uh, any difficulties in providing enough backup power to keep the network active in case of a power failure? Um, no, actually, um, I actually, I previously mentioned the um, exercise that we had. That was a remote location and we used a, ba a backup battery. We didn't have any power at all. As you could see, it's it was on the open field. So we used backup power, uh, uh, batteries. You could also use um, solar power uh, or pretty much anything that you have uh, on your hands. So no, we didn't have any problems. It's um, 
basically the only thing you need is your laptop and your radio station. That's it. Okay. Very good. Um, I, I missed the, uh, the communication standard you were talking about earlier. Was that S V X Victor X-ray or S J X, uh, Julia X-ray? Uh, Sierra Victor X-ray. Sierra SCX. Victor X-ray. And that's basically just linking repeaters to each other and then through the internet as well. Very much like echo link, right? Yeah, actually, they're, they are not repeaters. They are uh, okay. just uh, stations that uh, transmit on the simplex uh, channels. So, um, yeah, they are uh, linked. But uh, as I mentioned, if we connect SVX uh, links to Hamnet and we lose internet power and so on, we will still still have the active SVX uh, links. But for example, uh, as we right now in Bosnia, we don't have Hamnet. Um, so there were situations where a uh, network uh, is lost uh, at some locations and power or there are technical difficulties. So we uh, basically lost uh, even like big parts of Bosnia, for example, the Kraina region or the north uh, northwest uh, part of Bosnia. So that's a big, pretty big problem that could be solved with Hamlet. Okay. What was the uh, communications uh network you were, or a protocol you were using for that example where you went from uh Zeri, Sarajevo to Tunisia or Zeneca uh, Zenica, uh, Zenica. <laughs> Zenica. yeah that yeah that was actually uh Hamnet so oh, okay. um yeah so we went from the Hume Tower to the Zenica's biggest mountain the Lisets and uh yeah it's a proposed project but those towers will communicate through each other and since it's on the mountains um those towers will transmit it back into zenitsa and other towns cities places and so on so if we ever need to use hamnet we will we would use the um for example i don't know maybe mesh network local mesh networks in the cities which would be connected to those uh, big towers with high output uh, powers. So uh, that was the proposed project we had for uh, only those three or like four or five, six cities which could receive that signal. And what frequency were you using there? Was that the uh, nine centimeters? Yeah, that's the nine centimeters. So uh, the, the proposed project says that we should use uh, five gigahertz band because it's not really congested uh, unlike the 2.4 gigahertz, which basically every network, at least in Bosnia, uses. Uh, and okay. five gigahertz is basically not used anywhere. So, yeah. Okay. I, and while uh, uh, we were doing the presentation, I went and I uh, measured that. And that's about a 35 mile range from Zenica to Sarajevo. So much more than you would get on your typical Wi-Fi router, uh, no doubt about that, so they can reach out. Um, for those who are wanting to get started into emergency communications with, what system or capability would you recommend starting with? So um, what we have with uh, the new members in the emergency communications network, uh, we first like teach them, because since uh, there's basically more youth than uh, the elderly people there. Mm -hmm. So basically the whole network is youth. So first of all, we teach them um, how to use the radio equipment because most of them don't even have a license. Uh, and basically the first thing which they uh, use is the VHF transmitters. So we use the local repeaters here um, to communicate and then we go on uh, different levels but it's the main com uh, main means of communications uh, vhf or vhf repeaters and simplex links and also from time to time we use um hf transmitters uh on the i think it's 80 meters band for some uh scads uh for example when we have to reach our members in germany and uh but yeah that's it yeah, and I would also think that if you wanted to be in community, emergency communications in your area, you would find out what people are already using for what protocol they're using for your area 
to uh, unless you want to start something new. But uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know. Th I think I had said the WinLink is the standard for the Red Cross here and for many other agencies. But uh, you can use WinLink on many different um, frequencies: HF, uh, UHF, VHF, uh, using different things, uh, different ways to get into that. Yeah, so. uh, I would like to uh, give a, an example. When we had um, the first days of the coronavirus here uh, in March 2020, uh, there was a lock, uh, lockdown. Uh, basically, people uh, up until the age of 18 and over 65 couldn't um, go out of their homes. Uh, so uh, the rest of the operators that um, were licensed we basically use just our regular uh, handheld radios to communicate. And if they needed something, for example, groceries and stuff, they could um, uh, stay in touch with the local amateur radio operators and they could just bring them what they need and check up on them. So, yeah, yeah okay. that we use that for like two or three months and then the restrictions is out. And that's when we... Um, uh, seriously got into this emergency communications network and its um, uh, development. Did you do that because you found that there was a need for something other than what was there before? That you had you had the basics, but you you saw a need to expound on that and come up with uh, a better system of emergency communications. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, well, we have, a, like, a lot of terrain. For example, at, at my home, I can't reach basically any repeater or anything. Uh, the only thing I could reach is the local simplex channels. That's it. Uh, but we actually had, a year ago, uh, a seminar um, of the Emergency Communications Network, and that's when we discovered, like, Hamnet and WinLink and so on. Uh, and we have... Um, uh, pretty good relations with the Slovenian uh, Aaron or the Slovenian Emergency Communications Network, which uh, introduced us to these systems. And we also, unfortunately, have uh, experience with emergency communications uh, or had it uh, like 30 years ago uh, when we had uh, Yugoslav wars here. And mm -hmm. Bosnia really did have a lot of um, negative consequences. So uh, we were lucky enough to uh, actually uh, already had established emergency communications and we connected um, like very big amount of families during the war which didn't have any communications we connected them with their uh, relatives in germany and italy with uh, when they um, emigrated there um, for asylum and uh, that's how they communicated in war times. And that's uh, how uh, Bosnian emergency communications was established, basically, unfortunately. unfortunately. So uh, I heard in, yeah, yeah, I heard that uh, right now in Ukraine, uh, you can't even use the emergency communications. You can't use any bands at all because they are, there's a fear that uh, they are spies that are spying on the frequency and stuff. So we were actually grateful. Uh, we are lucky to uh, have uh, the communications established in the wartime. Yes, it, that's uh, as bad as hurricanes and such are. There are certainly worse situations where you need emergency communications. So, unfortunately. Uh, Mike is saying that in Georgia, uh, north of Florida here, that they use uh, WinLink and Vera as well. Uh, that's what Aries uses there. Uh, and once again, uh, I think that's because WinLink is the basically the de facto standard for uh, communications between the served agencies, certainly the Red Cross. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know about uh, WinLink, and there are certain forms that uh, in the in the presence or in the context of the email, you can put information in there that's standardized. So if you want to send a list of, well, these people are here or we need these medicines, uh, that's very easy to do in WinLink. And that's one of the reasons they use it here anyway. Um, I saw that you uh, had the message gram from the A. 
IARU, which look very similar, amazingly, <laughs> to the ones that the ARRL uses, and uh, I'm sure for the same reason. So you can let people, you know, send those standard things back and forth and let people know. Um, the, yes, the exactly. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's the standardized form of that telegram. I I know that the Red Cross here. Uh, also use the same form. So I think that's pretty much standardized all over the world. So, yeah. Yes. So it just shows you can help no matter where you are if you can get a radio communication link. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions for Suat? Uh, I want to show, uh, mention that he put his contact information on the presentation. However, if you want to go to his QRZ page, his email information is correct there, and he's willing to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah. So. Okay, Suad, is there anything else that you would like to add? I, I think it looks like we're kind of slowed down in the questions here. Yeah. Uh, I don't have anything on over my head right now so yeah i don't know okay do you have anything uh, else to add maybe like some experiences uh, or something you know uh it, as i said in the part of i'm on the western coast of florida and we do not get hit with the hurricanes here like they do on the east coast so uh we prepare and we practice uh, matter of fact, at the end of this month, or at the very beginning of next month, October 1st, we have a simulated emergency test. But uh, since I've been here, we, I have not been called to actually uh, activate anything because of the hurricane, which is the big thing here. So unfortunately, I don't have any firsthand or first person knowledge of having gone through one of these things. But, you know, like I say, we, we practice uh, just in case. And uh, uh, Kevin says, you've had the best presentation yet. So <laughs> thank you, Kevin, for saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, that's really much appreciated. Uh, one more thing I should add. Also, at least here in Basia, uh, apart from having experience in ham radio, you also have to be like uh, physically ready to help someone, to rescue someone. We also have um, other agencies that do that work, for example, uh, civil local civil protection or, or civil defense units. And um, uh, I think uh, is the mountain rescue service um, uh, with the mountain guard and police and stuff. So also obviously military. So uh, but apart from that, you already also need to be physically ready to uh, rescue someone or to um, put up the, uh, the your rigs and stuff uh, on the top of the mountains and hills and stuff, at least here in Bosnia. So, yeah. Now, when you say physically ready, what you mean, I think what you mean is you have to have your equipment ready. You have to have practiced with it. You have to uh, at least know what you're doing and not think about it at the last minute. Is that what you mean? Yes, and also to be ready to, uh, in any time of the day, to um, go out of your home and go like pretty uh, very far distances or very far away to uh, help someone. Okay. We do have another question, and is that, do you have any uh, thoughts about external hardware sound cards versus software sound cards? Um, I we don't really have much experience with like uh, the really high-end sound cards we actually uh, used one i guess you could say consider it sound card uh actually it's like the usb to the simple usb to um three and a half millimeters um that's what we use to connect our stations that's the most simple form uh, if you have stations such as Ye Yezu uh, or similar HF stations, you also have, um, I'm not sure, but there's a, a digital um, uh, output there. So you could uh, directly uh, uh, connect your computer with it. Um, uh, the thing is with uh, using the sound is with some stations such as uh, Bofang, um, 
uh, and similar handheld stations is that uh, when you connect the uh, input and output, um, you uh, hear a hiss on your frequency and uh, you can't really um, turn off the PTT. It's uh, always transmitting. You can't do anything with uh, the walk settings or anything. Uh, there's a simple solution for that, uh, which is to, uh, I think the uh, there are, is to ground or to connect the two ground uh, pins uh, on the three and a half millimeter jacks. Uh, that's how you uh, stop the transmissions. You just use a simple button for that. Uh, and that's uh, like you connect it uh, to two ground pins. Uh, that's how you resolve that problem. Uh, but that's why we don't use the sound too much. Uh, if we have the opportunity, we, we will uh, use the, uh, the station's like direct connection to just connect it with our computers. So uh, yeah, if you're using sound, uh, be prepared for some problems uh, with always transmitting. You can't really turn it off. Uh, but yeah, that's how you solve it. Okay. Do you use APRS in your emergency communications there? Um, yeah, but um, not really. I mean, you couldn't really use APRS. Uh, you, uh, If you had emergency situation, you wouldn't really have time to use APRS. You would just find the nearest channel and communicate there. So, yeah. That's it. We don't really use much APRS here. Uh, here. Maybe uh, when we set up SVX links, we use APRS to like see and uh, pinpoint the, uh, the nodes there. But uh, apart from that, not really. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. I think. Oh. I, I think it was for you. I think you. I clicked on. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I clicked uh, on that, but I wasn't going to oh. try and pronounce that, so I just wanted you oh, to see it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Hvala sva za ovu prezentaciju. It was by Janko, Sierra 5, 7 November Kilo, from yeah. Slovenia. Um, hvala puno, Janko. Thank you very much, Janko, for um, što si pratio ovo. Uh, I nadam se da ću imati dobru saradnju i budućnost. Ako imaš bilo kakvih pitanja, to some other spolaga and you could set email stagod. Uh yeah, so thank you very much, Yanko. Uh I hope we will stay in touch later. Okay. <laughs> that was much more than I was gonna do. <laughs> okay. Uh let's see. Does anybody else have anything? Okay. I guess we're good. So I once again, I'd just like to thank Swad for uh, doing the presentation. It was uh, a pleasure and an honor to work with him. And uh, we're going to shut down the stream at this time. So thank you, everybody. And I'm sure, uh, Swad, uh, one last chance. Anything you want to say? <laughs> uh, yeah. If you need uh, uh, any help uh, with setting up the Hamlet stations or link or anything, you could uh, contact me. We could uh, keep in touch. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to participate in your project. Uh, also, if you have any more questions, you can keep in touch. Uh, you already have uh, had my contact information on the presentation and in, on the QRZ as well. So you can contact me there as well. Uh, and uh, thank you very much to all of you uh, who watched and to all the compliments <laughs> that you gave me here. Um, uh, uh, thank you to QSO today for giving me uh, the chance uh, to participate here. And sorry for uh, that the presentation or my presentation, talking in the presentation wasn't really good because it was like, it wasn't scripted at all. I was I had the very last chance to uh, do it, uh, but I'm glad that it uh, worked out. So thank you all for your support. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.